Welcome to Trial Site News Podcast Series. Today we'll be talking about COVID-19 treatments and the race to catch up to mutant variants. And to do this, we are delighted to have Abpro CEO Ian Jan here with us today. Now, the Boston-based biotech Abpro Therapeutics is developing a monoclonal antibody treatment called ADP300 that may be effective even in people infected with one of these new strains. This, according to preclinical data that the company published in Nature Communications. So, Ian, welcome. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. So I'm going to jump right into this and talk about mutant variants. Can you explain for our audience what precisely this is and why it is so important that this gets addressed? Yeah, so mutant variants are basically different types of the virus as it replicates. So you can imagine the virus, every time it infects patients, the virus replicates. And during this replication process, the DNA of the virus can change the genetic makeup. So these different changes can lead to different uh, strains of the virus, which can affect um, the current vaccination campaigns that are ongoing, um, meaning they can either make vaccines, some of them less effective, um, so that could be very troublesome. So it's very important that the entire industry is working very quickly to be able to evolve with the pace of these genetic changes and strains. So you can imagine the virus is trying to outsmart all these vaccines out there and get around them. So mankind similarly has to evolve just as quickly with therapies and also vaccines that provide very, very broad coverage. So that's something that's very unique to our program. We've been able to plan in, uh, in our therapy, broad mutant coverage. So very early on, we've looked into this and identified it as a very um, urgent issue and have designed in our program broad mutant coverage so that we can cover as many of these types of strains as possible. So that's something that I think uh, there's a lot of awareness and concern about and we need broad coverage, certainly, not only in vaccines, but therapies. Right. Now, let's take a step back then. I want to fill our audience in about your company, Abpro. Can you share your experience as to this process that commenced back in 2007? Yeah, so 2007, we wanted to launch a next generation antibody company. We saw that all these new targets were unearthed primarily as a result of the Human Genome Project. And that one of the most successful modalities already out there, meaning monoclonal antibody therapies, could be taken to the next level and applied even more broadly to severe disease. So that was really the beginning of the company uh, in the early days. So early yeah. on, we, we built a platform that could go after traditionally difficult targets uh, that could be drugged by monoclonal antibodies uh, that could do it at industry leading speeds to really accelerate the entire drug discovery process. Now we know, now we here at trial site news noted that you have a handful of development products in the pipeline. Could you share the company strategy overall? Yeah, the strategy is really to leverage monoclonal antibody therapies uh, into next generation treatments. So primarily new targets, uh, targets that can be primarily um, combined uh, with two, two targets, so primarily bispecific antibodies, or new, new, new modalities such as uh, infectious disease with, with neutralizing antibodies, for example. That's something that the field is relatively new to, but in recent the year or so has proven to be extremely effective. With the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic, could you share how the company considered the development of responses to fight the pandemic? Yeah, so in the early years, we, we ran almost 300 campaigns with large pharmaceutical, biotech, also leading academic labs. And we had overall great success against a lot of different targets. Uh, infectious disease happened to be one of those areas. So we knew the power of neutralizing antibodies from those days. So when the pandemic broke out, we could we leverage not only that body of knowledge that we built up in the company, but also on the platform itself, the ability to be able to create monoclonal antibodies very quickly 
at industry leading speeds. Um, so when we combined the two and the speed at which we saw the pandemic occurring around the world, uh, this, this made sense really as a very logical way on a the therapeutic side to really provide a solution for people affected by COVID-19. Now I want to talk to you about recombinant proteins, including the diver's immune platform. Can you share on a high level, a summary of this product? Yeah. So this platform is something with, that we developed in house. So it covers the entire value chain for drug discovery, primarily next generation types of monoclonal therapies uh, at, at industry leading speeds. So historically to be even able to create a monoclonal antibody has been a multiple month, uh, oftentimes one year or more kind of process. So our platform accelerates all that into as little as two months uh, using a set of proprietary technologies that allows us to create novel monoclonals at industry leading speeds. And then we have further integrated that into a set of engineering technologies on the back end to fine tune these antibodies so that it, they can have extra benefit for patients in the clinic. Um, so it's entirely integrated all the way from really finding novel targets and then being able to create the antibody extremely quickly at industry leading speeds and move it in the clinic for patients. Can you talk about the mechanism of action of the investigational product targeting COVID-19? Yeah, so the, uh, neutralizing antibodies work exactly the way they sound. So it neutralizes uh, the virus. So these antibodies, which are produced by our immune system, they bind to an area of the uh, virus called a spike protein. And essentially at a high level, it prevents the virus from entering human cells. So effectively neutralizing the virus. So that's something that's proven to be very, very effective. Uh, certainly in our preclinical studies, we have great data around that. Um, in fact, we demonstrate some of the highest efficacy and neutralization rates uh, in the entire industry, primarily uh, certain key measures we would be considered certainly best in class for effic eff efficacy. Um, so that's generally how it works. It, it targets those reasons. Now, we here at Trial Site News, we've tracked many studies funded by the NIH and the ACTIVE program. What is your perspective on why so many companies secure federal funding while others do not? Yeah, I think it's a really company-specific kind of um, criteria. So companies weigh that, and then there are many decision-making points as to whether the company may choose to do that or not. Um, there's certainly many programs that the government has sponsored, uh, and some companies are participating in that, and some are not. So it comes down to overall the company strategy, uh, whether the trial itself is a good fit for the program, um, so on and so forth. So it's, it's quite personal to, to the company itself. So what about ABPRO? Are you going to open up to any government funding discussions as well? I think if there's a fit for, for, for our therapy, um, and, if, and if that really helps us accelerate this kind of therapy to patients, absolutely, it would be something that we would explore. Uh, ultimately, that's the name of the game, to be able to bring these therapies uh, to patients as quickly as we can. So to the extent any of these programs can enable that, we, we would explore them, for sure. Now, could you tell us what phase the neutralizing antibody-based therapy is headed into now? Yeah, so currently we're in a setup, uh, phase two and three studies. So these are called registrational type studies that would, upon success uh, with, with good data, uh, would lead to an approval. Uh, so it's already gone through phase one, safety. Uh, phase two, we're well underway, phase two and three. Uh, studies. So initial patients have been dosed. Um, so this would be considered the last set of studies before we go and go into an approval. Can you tell us about some of the risks you anticipate and or opportunities? Yeah. So we're looking forward to certainly the opportunity to demonstrate the effectiveness of this drug. I mean, I think the whole company is very excited about it, the potential to, to be able to treat uh, COVID patients. Um, so I think there's great excitement about that. And that's a tremendous opportunity to showcase um, the potential of this therapy. Certainly in preclinical studies, we've seen great data come out. So all this is published in Nature Communications. Uh, we demonstrated very, very strong neutralization 
against COVID-19 in a matter of three days or so, uh, not only as a therapy, but also as a prophylactic uh, in large animal studies. Uh, and in phase one, we've been able to demonstrate great safety. So phase two is really an, a great extension of um, the clinical trial process to demonstrate efficacy uh, in, a, in a really broad set of patients up to uh, 1500 in our case. So I think we're extremely excited about all that. So for, for the benefit of our audience, can you explain how you conduct studies? Do you leverage CROs? And if so, large ones or niche or specialized firms? Yeah, so these are um, generally very large clinical research organizations, CROs. So they have global capabilities and the wherewithal to really coordinate these kind of trials for companies like us, which uh, we, we are a biotech company. Um, so we've engaged a number of these companies to do exactly that. Now, if all goes according to plan, what do you see as a timeline for commercialization? Yeah, so that's going to be ten, depend on the data. Um, so our team is working around the clock, and there's various data points that, as that reads out, that could trigger various types of uh, approvals based on success of the clinical trial. So, so those the time points are uh, throughout this year and also into early 22. And as that data reads out, there are opportunities to get various types of approvals around the globe. Now, before we let you go today, Ian, is there anything else you'd like to share with the audience? Uh, yeah, I think, I think the company, we're excited about the current ongoing clinical trials, certainly the prospects for the therapy and neutralizing antibody, which has the best-in-class characteristics for efficacy. Also, the overall program has very broad coverage against mutant strains, which is a hot topic today. Uh, we really believe it could help patients uh, significantly as a first-line treatment for mild to moderate uh, folks who are affected by, by COVID-19. So I think the overall company is extremely excited about the uh, ongoing clinical trial. Well, Ian, thank you so much for taking the time to participate in our interview today. We know you're busy and we appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much.